Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Media silent as Gold Star Mother reveals horrific thing Obama did after Marine son died. While the media has been up in arms over another phony scandal involving President Trump, they keep missing the real stories out there. They have no interest in reporting any fact that goes against their cozy little anti-Trump narrative. The media has turned into shills for an idea or political party and is relentless in pushing their storylines. But every once in a while the truth sneaks in and exposes them. Like what just happened when a Gold Star mother came forward and revealed the horribly insensitive thing Obama's admin did to her after her Marine son died in Afghanistan. Julie Schrock, whose son, Corporal Max Donahue died at age 23, told the sad truth to the New York Post and Obama is not happy. She said, I'm a Gold Star mother and it pains me to see what is happening. The media bias is obvious to anyone willing to dig a little deeper than just believing what they hear on the news correct. They take a political hack like Frederica Wilson's word for it and don't care for the truth. If they had cared for the truth they would have made what this gold star mother said next their headline, because it is a real scandal. When my son died, then President Obama not only made no effort to reach out, but the condolence letter we received was signed by a computer. He didn't even sign the letter. But it gets worse. Then, when I received multiple copies of the letter, I was told there was a computer glitch that wasn't fixed yet so more would probably keep coming and I should just throw them away. Not even a sorry. She had to keep getting the same heartbreaking letters day after day reminding her of the tragedy and they didn't apologize let alone fix it. I anonymously reported this to our local news station, which ran at one time versus the three days of Trump mishandling of a gold star condolence. Sad and hurtful to say the least, she concluded. That should be the story not what Frederica says, don't you think? Oh my god! Major bombshell unearthed last night that sheds light on who killed Kennedy. According to the JFK files released that occurred last night, the Soviet Union thought that President Lyndon B. Johnson could be behind the JFK assassination. They also feared that Moscow would be attacked on retaliation. According to this December 1, 1966, FBI memo, the KGB was in possession of data purporting to indicate President Johnson was responsible for the assassination of the late President John F. Kennedy. The memo was forwarded by FBI Director J. Edgar Hoover in all caps. Reaction of Soviet and Communist Party officials to the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, said. KGB headquarters indicated that in view of this information, it was necessary for the Soviet government to know the existing personal relationship between President Johnson and the Kennedy family, particularly that between President Johnson and Robert and Z. Kennedy. Now. Keep in this in mind. This is just what the Soviets thought could have been behind the killing? It also shows that they seem to not know who killed Kennedy. It gets even crazier. One of the documents released points out that a man named Orest Pena was an FBI informant that lived in New Orleans in 1959. He testified that he knew who Oswald was and saw him with federal agents at one point. The Warren Commission's report is very different. Rep. Mia Love just exposed Nancy Pelosi and DNC's diversity hypocrisy with six words that sent them cowering. Haitian American Republican Congresswoman Mia Love, RUT, is sick and tired of the Democrats' constant cries for diversity. Love took aim at Democratic hypocrisy, especially from Nancy Pelosi, in a scathing interview with Rep. Sean Duffy, RY. 
Love slammed Pelosi for seeking a superficial kind of diversity. It's okay for you to look a certain way. But if you don't think the same way as she does, then that's not the kind of diversity she wants. For Nancy, it's a voting block. She's more concerned about winning elections than she is winning on the policies that actually help Americans. Love then went on to describe how the DNC which always claims that minorities and women are underrepresented in Congress tried to keep her, a black woman, out of office during her 2014 race. They went and recruited a white, male Democrat outside of the district to take me out. Then she joked. That'll help with the diversity issue. Those are the six words the DNC fears most they are finally being called out for the hypocrites they are. Republicans value ideas and values regardless of race or ethnicity. When the Democrats rail on diversity at all costs, they end up looking like fools when people of color turn against them. When Duffy suggested her background would make the DNC more supportive of her, she brought the hammer down. Well certainly not the Democratic Congressional Campaign Committee, because I think that it's a narrative that they don't like. You know? I've realized that it's something that they'll do everything they can to fight against, and I think it's because it scares them. A black woman Republican politician certainly would scare the DNC considering race baiting and identity politics are some of their favorite vote winning tactics. It's so great to see conservative congressmen and women of color speaking out against Nancy Pelosi's hypocrisy and showing the DNC's true colors. H.T. Washington Examiner Eric Bowling's son's cause of death is revealed and it's more tragic than we thought. When Eric Bowling's son, Chase Bowling, was found dead right after his father was fired from Fox News, most people suspected suicide. But the real answer is far more tragic. According to a post on Eric Bowling's Facebook page, his son died of an accidental opioid overdose. The news comes directly from Eric Bowling's Facebook page. Just received some tragic news from the coroner in Colorado. Eric Chase's passing has been ruled an accidental overdose that included opioids. Adrian and I thank you for your continued prayers and support. We must fight against this national epidemic, too many innocent victims, Eric wrote. This revelation comes the same day Trump declared opioid addiction a public health emergency, freeing up money to help stop the epidemic. Send Eric your thoughts in the comments and share to raise awareness of opioid addiction. It can happen anywhere, but it can be stopped. Trump is doing what he can and we must, too. Obama's CIA director just risked everything to leak the one secret that'll drain the swamp. It's a scandal when the media can't cover it up. It's an even bigger scandal when Obama's CIA director says that the Intel Committee needs to look into the Clinton dossier payments. Below is Leon Bonetto being interviewed by Wolf Blitzer. Watch the amazing thing he says. This is the string that is going to pull out the sweater of lies that Hillary has built around Washington. It is becoming increasingly apparent that Hillary paid for Russian intel on Donald Trump. This needs to get out ASAP. This is a huge scandal. The Democrats are dumping Hillary. Share this to help bring down Hillary Clinton. God bless the USA. Phew. Can I get an amen in the comments? NFL player defies coach's orders to stop kneeling, what happens next has Americans cheering. A Cowboys player who defied team owner Jerry Jones's orders to respect the national anthem has been fired from his job, according to BizPack Review. Demontre Moore raised his fist during the anthem in protest, 
which was very severely discouraged by Jones earlier this month. The Cowboys are claiming that the cut was a roster move lol, and that it was the best decision of our team. Right. What will be truly telling is what the team ultimately does about David Irving, who was already in hot water for failing a drug test earlier this year. Irving sat out four games at the start of the season, then returned to the team to protest the anthem. Really, guy? Honestly, do these players not want to be making millions a year playing football? Is it really that important to defy Trump and their team owners, at the risk of their careers? Moore has said that he doesn't consider raising his fist to be disrespectful of the anthem. I've got a lot of family members that are in the military, he said. My brother just got done serving a tour. He was over there, stationed in Germany, both my granddads, my granddad and my stepdad, was heavily involved in the military. I've got other family members who are.